Hey everybody, Dave here. Today we're going to do an action walkthrough on the action count columns, which is part of the internal business object collections. Now you might be saying, Dave, uh, can't anybody count columns? It's not very difficult. Tell it what collection to count, give it a number data item, and you're good to go. Well, I'm going to show you at the end of the video why even such a simple action like this is important to know its functionality before you try to implement it into something especially that's going to go into production. As always, we have our seven-ish steps that we go through whenever we're learning a new action. As I said, this is a really simple action, just counting the number of columns in a collection, but there are situations where it would be a good idea to know this ahead of time. Make sure you know what its functionality is. So what we're going to do first is call the action. So let's drag an action stage onto the page and click this drop down list next to business object. Let's go down and select collections in our internal business objects group and then select the action we want, count columns. I'll rename the action stage to count columns and then let's click OK and go back and look at what our next step is. So we've called the action. We know we're going to have to give it some inputs and outputs, of course, but let's preview the preconditions and post conditions just a matter of good practice. We've got two pretty simple preconditions. We've got the collection stage must exist. Okay, so we are going to be counting the columns in a collection stage. We need to make sure that that collection exists. And then we need to make sure the collection stage must be within the scope of the action stage. Okay, so we'll put it on the same page to make it easy for ourselves. And then our post conditions are that the output data item will contain the column count. Okay, so I can probably guess that's going to be a number. The next thing is that we're going to set up the inputs and outputs. Let's move over to the inputs tab. And this says it wants a collection name. Okay, so we're going to need to create a collection. Let's go do that really quick and then come back. Click OK. Let's drag a collection stage from the left side onto the page. Let's rename this input collection. And then we'll uh, just click OK for now. Let's go back and look. We've got our inputs tab. Let's type the same name and actually we'll just drag it off from the left side. And as this always happens, if you've watched my other videos, I'm going to dra drop this on here and it gives me an error and says, oh, the required data type is text, but the data type of the input collection or the data type of input collection is collection. Just to point out really quick, basically, we need to make sure that what we're giving it here matches the data type of whatever it says here. And whenever I put a collection with square brackets around it here, it's actually trying to pass rows and columns in right into the value. So let's change the square brackets to quotation marks. So now we're telling it the collection name rather than giving it the collection itself. So let's also look at the outputs, right? It said we would need to output the number of columns. So we can name this whatever we want, but I'm going to name it column count. And I'm going to hit this button to automatically create the data item on the page. And it should automatically make it a number data item too. Click OK. I'm going to drag this into our outputs area, resize these a little bit to make them look nice to me. And then our next step is to verify the preconditions and post conditions. Let me go back into the action stage and we've got our input collection, got our output collection. So the preconditions collect collection stage must exist and it has to be within the scope. We have fulfilled both of those. It's on the page here. Of course, it's, it's on the same page, right? So it's within the scope of our action stage. The post condition was the output data item will contain the column count and we do have this. Let's just go verify it's a number data item. Even if this were text, it would work just the same, but I like to make sure that I'm verifying the data type as well. So we've gone through our first four steps. Let's link the stages in. I'm going to pause and point out that a matter of best practice, in my opinion, is never connect or link in a stage into your process flow until you have fully set it up. Um, so our next step is after linking the stages in, we're going to go ahead and run it. So we haven't put any, col any columns or any rows into this collection. So I should expect column count to be zero. Let's play it. All right. So we got column count zero. First, we're going to need some fields. So let's create some fields here. I'm going to click add field twice. I'll make both of these text. Okay. So we can expect that. At this point, we would get two out of the column count. I'm not going to add any rows yet because I want to know, will the column count 
capability tell me how many columns there are even if there are no rows? Let's find out. I'm going to reset and run again. So we can see that it does tell me how many columns there are even if there are no rows in the input collection. So let's go ahead and just test it with rows. Let's go into initial values, add a row. I'll put a little bit of data in here. This won't really matter, but click OK, reset, and play it. OK, so we got column count two. Now, this is the basic way to use this action. You find out the number of columns and then depending on your use case, why you're, you're trying to find out this information it could be data validation. Say you're, you're intaking a collection from somewhere and you want to validate that it has the right number of columns. It's kind of a soft validation in my opinion. You know, you're not, you, you really don't even know what the column names are yet. You don't know that they're in the right order or anything like that, but you would at least are verifying it's the right number of columns. Another use is that you want to know how many columns there are before you write into an Excel spreadsheet, for example. So if you have columns in that spreadsheet already and you don't want to overwrite data that's existing, you want to make sure you know exactly what's going to be overwritten. So you'd use this in tandem with how many with the count rows action as well. So we have gone through the first six steps and we've really even done step number seven, which is to verify the results because we can actually get a preview of the data under here. There's one more thing that we want to test and that is let's look at what happens when we try to count how many columns are in a nested collection. And what I want to show you here is that this is why you want to verify even what seems like very simple actions can have unexpected results. We have these two fields and what I want to do is add another field called field three. I'm going to change this data type to collection. What I'm going for is I want to count the number of columns in the sub collection or the nested collection. So I have this here. Go into your input collection into the fields tab. And what we're going to do is you see def not defined here. So this is an undefined collection, which is a nested collection within this outer one. I'm going to click into it and you'll see that it brings us up sort of a similar interface as we have for the, the parent, we'll call it the parent collection here. Um, so input collection is the parent collection. Field three is the nested collection. I'm going to add two fields into this as well, and we'll give them a data type of text. Okay, now click OK. Let's create a second action. We're going to change this first one to count columns parent. And then I'm going to copy this by hitting Control C paste it by doing control V didn't work the first time. Okay. So I'm pasting it onto the page and remember matter of best practice. Don't connect this. Don't link in this stage until you're ready for it to work. So I'm leaving it outside. I'm going to rename this to nested. And then we're going to count the columns of the nested collection. What was the name of that field? It was field three, I believe. So we're going to say count the columns in the input collection dot field three and then we'll output to a different item do column count nested I'm gonna click here to automatically create click OK and then what we have is a column count for the parent which I just I didn't rename to parent but whatever we'll go with it and then I have column count of nested so we have our input collection name input collection dot field three output column count nested let's hit f3 connect this in move it over to the left with f2 if i go in you can see here that we have we have we have a row in our main collection our input collection uh, and but we don't have a row in the field three collection go back, go back into field three you see the the field one field two are still there okay I hit reset play column count of three in the main collection the parent collection and a column count of zero in the nested but if I add a row in the nested collection let's go into initial values tab okay so we can set the initial values for this collection and all of its child or sub or nested collections so I'm going to click into this under field three 
initials tab inside of field three's collection. I'm gonna click add row and just type something in here. Okay, now hopefully I haven't thoroughly confused you, but remember this is a nested collection with field one and field two, and it has initial value of having one row. What we wanna know is that we have two columns here. We've already proved that by having no rows, the column count action or the count column action can't tell how many columns are in the nested collection. Let's see what happens when we have a row. And there you have it, folks. So count columns from the internal business object collections can tell how many columns are in a nested collection, but only if you have at least one row. So here's the point. Even if it seems like a very simple action, it can present problems. I can bet that most people couldn't have told me ahead of time that this is how it would work. And it's just a matter of uh, simply testing it out, and then you'll know what to do with it in the future. So thanks for joining me. Hope this has been helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.